solving shit at the pilot. it on. Niggas be broke and be solving, but still talking shit like they violent. Niggas is broke. Carmelo Anthony is always on the news for the wrong reasons. Ever since he came to the Knicks, he's only had one good season and he got eliminated in the second round. All the other years are either first round exits or just complete failures. Melo has said numerous times that he wants to retire as a Nick and wants to bring the city a championship, but I think it's come to a point where even Melo is tired of it. And thus, another Melo watch has emerged. Where should Melo go? I think the first thing we have to look at is, what is Melo in this point of his career? Carmelo Anthony is a 6'8 small forward that can score the basket in any way you can think of. However, his numbers are going down and father time is catching up to him very fast but I feel like he still thinks he's in his prime. He's a great guy to be a second or third scoring option on a championship team and is surprisingly pretty versatile on the defensive end as well. The only problem with Melo is will he accept his role as that second or third scoring option because even in New York, he has a seven foot three unicorn of a player in Kristaps Porzingis but we've seen Melo stop the ball too many times and we've seen him just try to take over games when he doesn't need to. But we also have to consider the fact that Carmelo has a no trade clause, meaning that not only will this trade have to be beneficial for both teams, they have to be beneficial specifically to the eyes of Carmelo as well. But with that being said, here are my top five choices for Carmelo Anthony. The Cleveland Cavalier. In a perfect world, this is the best trade destination for Carmelo Anthony. He can finally play with LeBron and it will sure give him the best shot of winning a championship outside of joining the Warriors. For the Knicks, the Cavs have players such as Kevin Love and Tristan Thompson that could easily replace the loss of Carmelo Anthony. So the ideal trade would be Kevin Love for Carmelo, but as we've seen this week, the biggest problem in the straight scenario is what does Cleveland get in return for giving up a piece like Kevin Love. Essentially nothing. Kevin Love is an all-star, a rebounding machine, can start the break as fast as anyone, and is almost as good of a scorer as Melo this year, and he's younger. Carmelo simply doesn't address any of Cleveland's issues. Is he a playmaker? No. Is he a big man? No. Carmelo is neither of those things. But if the Cavs could pull off a deal where they don't trade any of their big three, I would consider Melo. But even at that, I I'd still hesitate. The Los Angeles Clippers. Now this is actually my favorite option for Melo for a couple of reasons. One, it's Los Angeles. We know that Carmelo is in love with his whole brand. I mean, that's one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, Melo wanted to go to New York in the first place. Los Angeles is basically the second best thing to New York in terms of business opportunity. Another is the fact that in Los Angeles, he can win and the Clippers actually need him. While Melo is an ISO scorer and a ball stopper, the Clippers are actually one of the few teams, if not the only team, that actually need a player like that. When the playoffs come, the game slows down, and when you have a ball stopper like Melo, he essentially forces you to play that slowed down basketball, which is an aspect that I really think the Clippers need to work on. I know, I know it doesn't really make sense, but I've seen too many times where the Clippers have to throw up a bad shot at the end of the shot clock because they couldn't run their offense. Now you can just throw the ball to Melo in those situations and he can do what he does best without being scrutinized. Added to the fact that they'll finally fill the three spot that they've been searching for ever since CP3 came. So that is gonna be huge. Also, even though the Clippers may have to give up Blake Griffin, there is a case to be made about the Clippers playing better without him anyways, and the fact that you can replace him with Carmelo is very intriguing. I just think Melo on the Clippers makes too much sense. The only problem is according to the CBA, apparently a team can't have two max contracts on one team, and Derrick Rose is actually on a max contract. So if the Knicks were to bring in Blake, that would be two max players, which the new CBA doesn't allow. So they'd have to find a third team to complete the trade. Also, rumor has it that Phil is actually willing to listen to offers that don't involve the Clippers big three. So if that's the case, this is a no-brainer for the Clippers and the Knicks. They really just need to find the right deal and a third team to make it happen. The Boston Celtics. Okay, I know what you're saying. Man, this man always brings up the Celtics. But if you've been actually on the topic of this video, the Knicks have reached out to the Celtics and the Celtics have two first round draft picks from the Nets that are most likely going to be top 5, which makes them the best trade partner for any team trying to rebuild. So yes, 
the Celtics will almost always be in any trade rumor just because of the treasure of assets that they have. And the fact that they've been needing a star for years, I mean, they're the perfect trade partner for a lot of teams. But even after saying that, I don't think the Celtics are a good fit for Carmelo. One, I just don't think Carmelo will propel the Celtics above the Cavs. Melo wants out of New York to win a championship. And I think fans know and Melo knows that him going to Boston isn't gonna fix that. He's a ball stopper and the Celtics pride themselves in good ball movement and not trying to play hero ball. But I do believe that outside of the Clippers and the Cavs, this is his best option. Even if I said that adding him won't give the C's the best shot to win a championship outside of Boston, the Clippers, and the Cavs, who else is willing to trade for him and will be an enticing option for Melo given that his mentality is to win now? Now if I'm the Celtics, I only look at Melo if we can get him really cheap. I mean, we're talking 2018 Nets pick and Jalen Brown only cheap. If Phil Jackson is willing to trade with the Clippers without involving any of their big three, why wouldn't he entertain trading with the Celtics the same way and why wouldn't the Celtics try to trade just as much? the Oklahoma City Thunder. This team is actually the dark horse for Melo. The Oklahoma City Thunder is definitely not a enticing option for business opportunities and it is definitely not the best option for Melo to win a ring. But if Melo would rather go to any team besides the Knicks and if the Clippers, the Cavs, and the Celtics all don't want Melo or just can't find a trade to make it work, the Thunder would be the next best thing. This is basically like option D for the Knicks. I think the Thunder would think about pairing Westbrook and Melo as a way of maybe replacing Durant with Melo. Look, Westbrook isn't getting any younger and he's only there for two years, so if I'm OKC, I do everything to win now. Pairing Melo with Russ is the closest thing you'll ever get to two alpha scorers who want the ball working together, similar to KD and Russ. And if you look at the Thunder right now, they're sixth right now in the Western Conference and they're only a game and a half back from the fourth seed. I think adding Melo could potentially propel them to that fourth seed. The only problem with this is if Melo will be actually willing to waive his no trade clause and if the Thunder could package up a deal to make the trade work. That's the hard part, but that's why I say they're the dark horse. The Washington Wizards. I know, I know, this is very unlikely. I mean, very unlikely, but I, I literally couldn't find any other team besides the teams I already mentioned that either want Melo, has enough to offer Melo, and is a destination Melo would be interested in going to. The Wizards was the closest match I could find not named the Celtics, the Clippers, the Cavs, and the Thunder. Maybe Melo would be interested in pairing up with Beal and Wall in DC, and I think his mentality in Wall's mentality mentality would really work well. That, you know, that no fucks given mentality and that I'm the best mentality could really work well together if they pair up. I could see an Otto Porter Jr. and a Kelly Oubre maybe enticing to Phil Jackson and the Wizards should know by now that no free agent wants to come to them after their hometown kid Kevin Durant didn't even give them a meeting after they signed Scott Brooks, his former coach, just for that reason. So knowing that, I think the Washington Wizards try to trade for as much stars as they can and right now Carmelo Anthony is the hot guy on the block. So as you can see, Melo's trade situation is a very tough one. Melo wants to win now. Phil Jackson wants to rebuild. The teams that are winning right now don't need Melo. The teams that Melo wants to don't really need Melo as well. The teams that want Melo, Melo doesn't want to go to. Literally the only team I see that's a perfect match is the Clippers, but the whole CBA thing is making stuff too complicated. Everyone else is a reach and too big of a gamble for, for one side or another. But with that being said, I hope you guys like this video. And before I end this video, I actually want to tell you guys that if you guys follow me on Twitter, I actually post my videos sometimes even up to a day early. So if you guys want to see my videos up to a day early, follow me on Twitter at bsouls. I do post the unlisted video there. It's not gonna be a day early every time, but you know, maybe half an hour early. Just you know, there's a notification squad and then there's a Twitter squad, you know what I'm saying? So, again, follow me on Twitter and let me know what you guys think about this whole Carmelo trade because I'm very interested in what you guys have to say. But with that being said, man, I am out. Peace.